learn, David. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm sitting, I'm like I say, I'm sitting at the feet of Vincent Hawkins. All right, my brother. Well, you you, well, yes, you in the right place. You in the yes, right sir. place, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm yes. telling you. Yes, sir. And 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 uh, I I feel good about it, you know. And oh, uh, yeah. I I told him I said I said him and I we got we got to sit down and talk, you know. <laughs> Is he, now you see, he got on his Pepperdine shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that, that Pepperdine shirt says a lot, you know. And what up, Doctor T? <laughs> How you doing, Hawk? How you doing, my brother? Doc, if you throwing that them scriptures around them tornadoes down there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm just staying down and what they we we you know we have a LA here too. It's called Lower Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm just staying in my lane, my yeah, brother. Man, man um, good to see you, boy. Likewise, yeah. my brother. Likewise. Yeah. Yes, sir. Always, always good to see you, my brother. Yeah, you're a breath of fresh air, man. I want you to know. <laughs> Likewise, Doc. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. We uh we had we had a good we had a good session this morning. Oh, I know you did. I, I know said, you did. I said, I said Lord have mercy. Yeah. You had, you had mm -hmm. a you had a hawk at the helm. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I said, Lord. You know, well, looking you at that. You couldn't help but be all right. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, that mercy, boy. Yes, I'm Look, telling you, Doc. Looking yeah. at that communion, boy, it's totally a different thing now. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I said, Lord, I said, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I do, I, now, I do got to go out of town, but um, when I get back in town, I'm going to have to him and I, we got to sit down and chit chat a little bit. You know, we we're gonna have to go get a frappuccino and we're gonna have to sit down and talk here. Yeah. <laughs> frappuccino, oh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. yes, sir. You know, and wish and you then, was not. So yeah, so you down there in the in the in the in, in LA, Doc. We out here in high, high LA, high falutin LA. Just, it, I see. it ain't I see. it ain't it ain't nothing but some spiced up folgers coffee, Doc would look at it. I was putting the set now, y'all boy. You you sipping on some stuff, that <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. Oh my goodness. That's all it is. I guess Maxwell House don't do it no more. Huh? Look at you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we were down there with you. We'd be sitting uh, at the Cracker Barrel somewhere talking. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right there. <laughs> Look right there on the front porch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Cause I'm gonna tell you. With the it's big wisdom. chicken board, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, we just yeah, keep it yeah, simple. Yeah. We just keep it it's simple. wisdom that they're throwing down up in here, uh, Tillman. I'm gonna tell you, man. Yes, sir. There's yes. some powerful stuff here. Oh, I know it. I know when it. Down, when you sit down and look at it, and you yes, sit down sir. and reason with it, and you sit down and listen to God and let God teach you. It's yes, some, sir. There's some wisdom here, my brother. It's, it's a blessing, my brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. a blessing. Oh yeah. Listen. I'm gonna get started because I want to give you the every, every opportunity that you can to have your little sermon at or what you have prepared for us today. Yes, what we talked about, and I have a uh, I have a young man on here with me, and I'm gonna ask him if he could, if he would, do our opening prayer, and uh, that is, I believe I'm gonna select Philip uh, Wilford. And if Philip Wilford is with me, I'm going to ask him to do our opening prayer for us. Phil, are you with me? Yes, brother. Okay. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Phil. Glad to have you with us. I'm also going to ask you uh, uh, to do a special prayer for Brother Reuben Barkins. Do a special prayer for, for him at this time. That's my prayer request. If anyone else got a prayer request, Please unmute your mic and make it known at this time. Okay. If there, if there be no more, also, uh, Phil, uh, pray for me. Like I said, asked this morning, I am going out of town and uh, pray for me as well. Okay. So if there be no other prayer requests, we're going to ask you to to uh, take us to the throne, Phil, at this time. 
Okay. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for this, this day. Thank you, Father, for blessing us to come to this hour, this afternoon, evening, Father, for another soul session. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to uh, hear another portion of your word from your man, son, your brother David Tillman. Father, we just thank you for our dear brother coming once again to enlighten us with your with the scriptures, Father, and to edify us and and helping us to uh, see your will in your way, Father. Hearing and study the word, and we just thank you for our dear brother, uh, who is uh, ready and able, Father, according to thy divine spirit and your divine directive to uh, share the word. We want to take a portion at this time, Father, to uh, ask special prayer for our brother elder, uh, Reuben Boykin, and the loss of his brother his, uh, that just happened uh, recently, Father. We just ask that you will please comfort the family at this time. Mm -hmm. We ask that you will wrap your arms around them, Father. May the family uh, rally together uh, around one another at this most difficult time, this difficult moment in their life. We just ask that you that we that we lift them up to you mm -hmm. and hope and pray, Father, that you give them the comfort and the peace of mind and the strength that they will need at this time. Also, mm -hmm. Father, we just ask special prayer for our brother elder uh, uh, Jerome Thompson, Father, who will be traveling uh, uh, back home to uh, uh, Missouri. We just ask that you will bless him, bless him with a safe travel. We ask that you be with him, watch over him, keep him. And we ask prayers for uh, his sister, uh, mm -hmm. Sandra Davis, father, who is uh, uh, dealing with health issues at this time. We just ask mm -hmm. that you will bless her father uh, in those areas of need and that your healing grace will be upon her father. Mm -hmm. And that um, uh, his presence, uh, Jerome's presence and other family members will continue to encourage her and lift her spirits up and give her the strength that she needs as well. Yes, now, sir. Father, we just ask that you bless each and every one to have a open heart and a ready mind to receive your word with all gladness. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you, Father, for uh, this privilege and honor to always uh, uh, be in, encouraged by your word. And just thank you for your many blessings. It's in Jesus' name I ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Phil. Uh, appreciate your prayers. Appreciate your presence with us uh, each Sunday evening. And... Uh, we are also continuing to pray for you and your family and the things that they are going through as well. And not only you, for all of us who are going through trials and tribulations at this time. There are a lot of, lot of hurt going on around and uh, the church need prayers. The church need prayers. A lot of bad things are going on in this world right now. But we have an avenue. We have an avenue. And that avenue is through the power of of prayer. God hear our prayers. He teaches us that we are to pray without ceasing. And so that is what we practice. That is what we do. Tonight we have a very special young man. He is not brand new to us. He's been here before with us. He knows how to do it. He knows God's word. He studied God's word. He lives God's word. And has a very humble spirit very humble heart, and that is by the name of Brother David Tillman. He comes to us out of, I do believe it is Georgia, somewhere down Alabama. there. Alabama. Alabama, down yes, there in sir. Alabama. Yes. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> down there in those southern <laughs> states. Yes, and, sir. And uh, he's, like I say, he's not new to us. He's been here before. So we asked Brother David Tillman, if you will, please step to the mic and give us a little sermon at this Sunday evening. And he has consented to bring us a lesson from God's divine word, the Bible. I got introduced to him uh, through Brother Isaac Sandifer out there in Bakersfield, California. And ever since I've been introduced to him, just love his spirit, love his heart, love the work that he's doing in the area where he's at. So for the next few moments, you will hear the voice of Brother David Timmon out of Alabama. And uh, we're going to ask that you mute your mics and listen to God's word being spoken through this hard fighting soldier. So, Brother Tillman, this lesson is being recorded. Bring to us what's upon your heart at this time. You have the floor. Go on, loosen, Pastor. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Thompson, for those kind words. And I really appreciate everyone uh, who has come tonight and just continuing to keep this encouragement going. As you were saying, uh, there's a lot going on going on in our world. Uh, there's a lot going on in our congregations. So there's a lot going on in our lives. And so we're just uh, grateful for uh, this medium that you and Brother Sandifer have uh, each and every Sunday evening and afternoon so that the people of God can be encouraged. And one of the ways that I found uh, that really keeps me encouraged is just my ability to never forget who I am in the Lord and to the Lord. Uh, and the Lord has a marvelous way of making sure uh, that his children are okay, of making sure his children are okay. And uh, even though we have to go through trials, uh, tests, tribulations, and troubles, uh, the Lord is not one to forget our work and our labor of love. And so, so I thank each and every one of you for being here uh, with us uh, tonight. And, and certainly I want to speak uh, from something that I think is going to help us, something that I think is going to help, because it's easy to get caught up in the what and the whys of the world. Uh, but there's something in the word of God that always brings us back to our roots and keeps us grounded. So look at 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 with me tonight. Let me start my, my, my clock so I don't go over my time. 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 beginning at verse number 5. Very familiar, very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, I just want to take it and encourage us tonight. Besides all this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Now, we're going to take uh, this approach of encouragement from what Peter says here in verse number nine. If you lack these things, you're blind. And the extent of your blindness is that you cannot see afar off. And that blindness also causes some forgetfulness because he says that you have forgotten that you've been purged from your old sins. So I want to talk about the fallacy of forgetting that you have been purged, the fallacy of forgetting that you have been purged. One of the worst things that a Christian could ever do is not live like what they have become. In Ephesians chapter four, uh, verse number one, the apostle Paul encouraged the children of God in Ephesus to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith they were called. They had been called to be Christians and they were to live like what they have been called to be in second peter chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 20 the bible says for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. The utter disgust that this picture paints is really a realistic portrayal of just how far we sink and how deep down in degradation we decline when we fail to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our God. God has, according 
to the writing of the text in 2 Peter chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 3. He has given us everything that we need to grow and to maintain a life of godliness and moral excellence. Peter says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to, virt to glory and virtue. Literally, literally speaking, Peter is saying that there's no excuse for me not to be what God would have me to be. God has given me grace that I might become his child. And then he has given me knowledge of how he did, what he did, so that I might continue to grow in the knowledge of how he did what he did. In addition to all of that, he has given me exceeding great and precious promises so that in the midst of my growth, I can share with him in his divine nature. Sometimes growth is painful. As James would exhort the children of God in chapter one, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is that which produces or brings about some patience. Now you need patience because he says that patience will work with you. Patience will work on you so that you can mature. The language says you'll be perfect and entire, wanting or lacking nothing. So in the midst of us growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ, we can share with him in his divine nature. This simply means that since our God is holy, our lives will be holy. Since my God is righteous, I can also be righteous. Because of his promises, I am his child and he is my father. Therefore, I am made or a partaker of his divine nature. This is why we cannot ever afford to forget that we have been purged or literally cleansed from who we used to be, and we have now ascended to who we have become. To forget that is to deny yourself the privilege of being a partaker of his divine nature. To shamefully revert back to who I was is to forget the process that got me to where I am. Therefore, as the Apostle Peter encourages the children of God, the need to earnestly add or to supplement to their faith some graces or some characteristics that's going to help them grow and be fruitful in Christ. When you look at verse number five of the text, 2 Peter chapter one and beginning at verse number five, it says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now notice, faith has already been established as the foundation for Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But now how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? Verse 17, faith comes by hearing and then hearing by the word of God. You obeyed the gospel because you heard the gospel. You believed the gospel. You made up in your mind that your past was your past and that you were ready to live for the Lord. And so you confessed Jesus as the son of God and was baptized for the remission of your sins. Faith, once again, was the foundation. Faith is what helped you get into Christ, but you cannot just stop with your faith. Faith is already there, but then you must build upon that faith. He says, add to your faith some virtue, some moral excellence. It is the ability to want to do right because right is the right thing to do. Then you add to your virtue some knowledge, some discretion, some right understanding of what's right. If you're going to do right, you have to know what's right. And then add to your knowledge some temperance, some self-control. Literally, 
keeping yourself in check. Add to your temperance some patience, some endurance, some stickability, the ability to get up under that weight and have some hang time. Then add to your patience some godliness. Your will is surrendered over to the will of God, your God-likeness. Not only are you created in the image of your God, but the more you partake of his divine nature, the more you mature and grow in the knowledge of your, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there is a God-likeness about you that distinguishes you from everybody else. Add to your godliness some brotherly kindness, the unfeigned or not hypocritical kindness and love for your brother simply because he's your brother. At times, your brother may not act like your brother, but you got to love your brother. At times, your brother may seem as though he's not really understanding the essence of what it means to be your brother, but that's what growth is all about. It is, as, as the Apostle Paul would write to the children of God in Rome, uh, he says in chapter 12, he says, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. And then add to your brotherly kindness some charity or some love, some unconditional love that is with these particular attributes that should be within us, that we will continue to grow and be fruitful in the knowledge of and in the service of the Lord. Notice what Peter says in verse number eight, he says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have these things, you won't be lacking anything that you need to be who God would have you to be. That's a mighty good thing right there. The Lord in, in, encourages us to make sure that we are everything that he would have us to be. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14, the apostle Paul encouraged us to not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. One of the things that the foundation of that, that Paul is relaying to the children of God is that God desires to be your God and that God wants you to be his children. Therefore, he says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And so with these things in us, we can be everything that God would have us to be. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect, but when we make a mistake, we get up, get back on track, consult our father. Father, and we keep running this race. We keep fighting this fight. We keep stabilizing and making sure we're mobilizing ourselves to be everything that God would have us to be so that in that day, we can hear him say, well done. Knowing that we have these things, we will neither be barren nor unfruitful. We won't be empty and we won't have harvests that are empty. When we are, when we under, when we know that God has given us whatever it is that we need so that we can be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we can be what God would have us to be. Now, on the contrary, on the contrary, if that's true, then the opposite of that's true. Peter says, if these graces are missing from our lives, we're in bad shape. Well, why are we in bad shape, Brother Tillman? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because Peter says there are two things that are wrong with you if these graces are missing from your life. Number one, Peter says you're blind. Notice verse number nine. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. This word in the text, blind, actually describes a person who is suffering from short-sightedness. He is the individual who is unable to see 
into the distance. He doesn't know how to walk by faith because he can't see that far off. So he only lives for the right now. He lives for the moment. He's doing all he can to enjoy this life because he can't see the benefit of living righteously to obtain the joys of heaven in the next life. He can't see. And because he can't see, he doesn't know that he ought to be not living to die but living to live again. The apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter five and beginning at verse number one, that if, the, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we got a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. In that same passage in verse number six, Paul says, for me to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. In Philippians chapter one and verse number 21, Paul said, I'm in a straight between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Of course, it's more beneficial and needful for the church for me to remain here. But if I could just have it my way, I'd go on home and be with Jesus. That's the kind of attitude that every child of God should have. In Revelation chapter seven and verse Verse number 13, the children of God were suffering some things John saw. And he says, one of the elders answered me saying, what are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? John said, I said unto him, sir, you know. And he said unto me, these are they that came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. When you understand the reason why you're going through what you're going through, when you come to the understanding of the value of you going through what you're going through, you're not, you're not short-sightedness like this individual that Peter describes, because you understand that there is a benefit to your bruising. You understand that there is a purpose to your pain. You understand that there's going to be some mercy for your misery. You understand that for everyone who's doing wrong somewhere, there's somebody who's striving to do right. And so you can't get so excited on what's occurring that you can't see what God is doing for us in the after while. That's why Peter says this individual who's missing the necessary elements that it took for him to grow and to mature to that understanding is blind. Why is he blind to me? Because he cannot see afar off. He cannot see that the Lord will fix it after a while. That's why he's asking the Lord to fix it right now. He doesn't understand the benefit of allowing the trying of his faith to work patience. He doesn't understand the benefit that Jesus says in this world, you shall have some tribulation. But Jesus also said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. He doesn't see the benefit of Paul instructing Timothy that yea, and all that live, will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer some persecution. He doesn't see the benefit of what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount when he declared, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And Jesus would say, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which came before you. He's blind. He's short-sighted and he thinks that everything is supposed to happen right now. But when you're dealing with God, you understand that these graces and these characteristics are to help you do exactly what Isaiah said. Isaiah said it best when he said, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. But see, when you're blind, you can't see that. When you're short-sighted, you don't see the benefit of suffering for righteousness sake. And so Peter says, you in bad shape. Why am I in bad shape, Peter? Because you can't see. Why can't you see? Cause you're blind. Why am I blind? Cause you are missing some stuff that will help you see what you need to see if you were able to see. If all you can see is what you can see, then you cannot see 
all there is to see. Oh, yes, yeah, that's some stuff that happens behind the curtain. There's some stuff that happens beyond this life that we know that we really don't have an understanding of, but that's why we've got to trust in God. But not only not only did Peter say he was blind, but then Peter said he was absent-minded. Now it's one thing to be blind, and it's one thing to be absent-minded, but to be blind and absent-minded, oh, you were in bad shape. This absent-mindedness is referenced in the text when Peter says he has forgotten that he was purged or cleansed from his old sins. This absent-mindedness is what causes him to go back into some stuff from whence he was delivered. This absent-mindedness causes him to forget the fact that he has been cleansed. He has forgotten that he's a new creation now. He has forgotten that his body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in him, which he has of God, and that he is not his own. He has forgotten that he used to be those things, but now he is washed, but now he is sanctified, but now he is justified in the name of our God and by his spirit. In Romans chapter six and verse number 17, Paul would declare, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. That's past tense, y'all, that you were the servants. Of, that means that's not what I am anymore, that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. When you're blind and you forget, when you forget and you're blind, the sum to total matter is simply this. You have been purged. You have been washed. You have been cleansed. You have been made brand new. You are now a but now child of God. Once was lost but now you can be, have been found, once was blind, but now you can see. Oh, that's the beauty and the blessedness where we are now as children of God. We have been purged from our old sins. We've been cleansed from our old way of life. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we've got to walk in the spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust and desires of the flesh to walk in and after the spirit is to my, keep minding your keep reminding yourself of who you are as a child of God. If you ever forget who you are, you'll start going back into some stuff that God has delivered you from. That's why Peter said, if you forget, you'll go back into some mess into some things that you couldn't even get yourself out of, some things that God had to rescue you from. But when you forget, you'll go back. Peter said in chapter two, verse 20 of second Peter, if after you've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you become again entangled therein and overcome. Your latter end is worse with you than the beginning because when you go backwards, you start formulating a mind again to think that what's abominable is acceptable. When you start going back, you have convinced yourself that being bad is a benefit. When you go back, you start thinking that crime is comfortable and what's detestable is delightful. That's why we can't go back because when you go back, you'll start thinking that evil is enjoyable. You'll start believing that what's false is fantastic, that what's gross is great and hideousness will make you happy. That's why we can't go back because when you go back, you become indifferent 
throw it iniquity. You start seeking to justify junk. You think it's keen to kill and lofty to be lascivious. That's why we can't go back because if you ever go back, you'll think that misery is meaningful, that naughtiness is needful. You'll be open with your oppression and think that pain is peaceful. You'll make ruckus a reality. You'll think that sin is sensational. You'll trade turmoil for tranquility and you'll make every effort to understand ugliness. That's why you can't go back. You got to do like Paul and said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me so I can press forth unto those things which are before. Paul says, I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What are you going to do, Paul? Why are you pressing? I'm going to move from being a, an adulterer to being an adorer. What are you going to do, Paul, when you keep on pressing? I'm going to go from being a backstabber to being a blesser. What are you going to do, Paul, as you keep on pressing? I'm going to go from being a gossiper to a gospel teacher. I'm going to go from being a hater to a helper. I'm going to go from being a killer to a keeper. I'm going to go from being malicious to being merciful. I'm going to go from causing pain to bringing peace. What are you going to do when you go forward? I'm going to stop being quarrelsome and I'm going to learn how to be quiet. I'm going to stop bringing sorrow and start singing songs of joy. I'm going to stop bringing trouble and start producing some tranquility. That's what happens when you move forward. But you can't move forward if you don't grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord. And Peter says that God has given us everything. Everything. There is literally no excuse come judgment day because God has given us everything that we need to live a life of godliness. One of the things that Solomon so aptly wrote, so eloquently and so definitively informed us of is that a man is only happy when he's serving God. Solomon said, I tried the wine, I tried the women, I tried foolishness, I tried wisdom, and I came to the conclusion all of it is vanity, ain't nothing in none of that stuff. He said, but the, so, the total sum of man's life is merely this, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Man is only happy when he's right with his creator. Because my creator can make some stuff right that's not right. And that's all right when you're his child. God bless you, brothers and sisters tonight. Certainly hope and pray that I've given you something that yes. will carry you on through this day. Yes, Amen. Sir. We're going to turn it over back into the hands yes. of Brother Thompson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Powerful <laughs> stuff, brother. Powerful. I don't know Thank why. You, I don't know why you selected that passage <laughs> of scripture there. I Come really, on, don't. I, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I hear yes, a lot of people are saying powerful sermon, powerful. Thank they Thank needed you. it. We needed that. We needed that. Bless you, you, my brother. Marvelous Bless job, brother. My question Thank is, you know. Somehow, some way, the good Lord is going to hook us up and we're going to get together. <laughs> yes, you, sir. Got, you come to Los Angeles, you got to look up. You got to look up. <laughs> got to. Yeah. I go to Alabama, I will look you up. Oh, yes, sir. Got Absolutely. To. Marvelous <laughs> job, my brother. Fantastic. You know, thank you, my brother. Why, why you were speaking there, I was thinking about that seeing part. When you say mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of people, yes. and we were talking about that in our Sunday school class this morning, mm -hmm. the carriage, the carriage to see. Yes. A lot of us, we don't see. We don't see. Powerful job, uh, David. Powerful job. Thank you, sir. You know? Thank you, my brother. 
marvelous, you know, and I, I'm just, hey, hey, you help me, you help me tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that passage of scripture again. You know, I'm going to Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Hall. <laughs> you 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 helped the bishop, but you hope me die. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them Alabama words, preacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless you, know, you, my brother. Thank I'm you. gonna open it up to anyone on this here stream here. You got it. I'm here. I'm seeing a lot of good stuff that they writing about for you in a little chat room. Wonderful, encouraging lesson, you know, a good lesson. And you know, touch the heart of a lot of people out here in Southern California and those who are on here. But I'm going to open it up to them. Uh, if they got any comments, if they got any uh, questions, just unmute your mic and direct it to Brother David Tillman. And he'll do all he can to answer your question or receive your comments at this time. You know, well, I guess a lot of people are satisfied. <laughs> a lot of them, they are comfortable. Thank you. Good job. You know, they 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 satisfied. My question is, do you think a person, you made mention of it in there, in your, in your little sermonette, you think that a person, or what's your thoughts on a person not being able to see anymore? What's your thoughts there? When uh, when you look at the parable of um, where the Lord was talking about, of course, the sower and the seed and the different grounds or hearts that the seed fell on, you know, one fell among thorns and the cares of this life choked the word out of them. Mm -hmm. And so the cares of this life, troubles, trials, mm -hmm. tribulations, can cause our vision to be a little fuzzy and cloudy. Mm -hmm. and so just tr trouble. I, we, I've, in, in my time of ministry, I've seen uh, people go uh, from being spiritually strong to extremely spiritually weak simply because of troubles, trials, and tribulations. One of the things that always encouraged me uh, when you when you read the book of Revelation, those individuals who John uh, told the the elders that he knew who they were, those who had gone through great trials and tribulations, in a former chapter were up under the altar, crying, asking God, "How long? How long?" Mm -hmm. God, in essence, tells them to go ahead and take your rest because it ain't near about over. Mm -hmm. You got some other brothers and sisters that are gonna have to suffer what you've suffered. Mm -hmm. That that blessed me. Mm -hmm. That blessed me because because oftentimes we're so focused on just when the deliverance is coming that we don't consider that God is developing us in the midst of the discouragement. Mm -hmm. That that's 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 some development that's going on. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord said, "Take your rest." Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't 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 think that I'm gonna snatch you out of there tomorrow. You you go go ahead and get your nap. You know, and you know, keep your feet up because that's because it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's some that's that's some God stuff right there. That's that's yeah, some, yeah. That's some yeah. things that that we that we here on earth uh, mm -hmm. don't understand. But but God in His realm and His sovereignty, He knows exactly why this is necessary. Uh -huh. So as, as the old folks said, now you, you know, I, now I've lived in uh, Mississippi and Alabama, now, and so in Mississippi, they would say you got to just trust him, even when you can't trace him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to just trust him. You got to know that he knows what's best. Uh -huh. But discouragement, mm -hmm. discouragement, and just not understanding why what's happening is happening, mm -hmm. and cause an individual not to be able to see as clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else got a comment or a question? I don't want to be the one out here asking the preacher the comment, uh, the question here. I know a lot of you have questions. I know a lot of you can comment on Second Peter uh, 1, verse 5 through 11. I know a lot of you guys got comments on that. 
And I'm just asking, just ask the question. Ask your biblical question and Brother Tim will do all he can to answer your biblical question. Anyone out there, I appreciate it. We appreciate all of you on with us. So anyone, ask your question. <laughs> I have a comment. I know Vincent there. I know, I mean, the, the preacher. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm just going to shut it down, Doc, in the words of MC Abbott. You can't test that, but you can't test that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bless your home bless your dog yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you, love, you really you. love you my brother yeah. okay. you have yeah. shown enough blessing boy you don't even know you help an old man today you hope me boy i tried to tell you yes, he, helped, my he helped he helped me he helped me i just like on in verse number 10 yes sir well you say my bible reads like this for if you do these things, you will never. Yes. Stumble. That's how mine's read. Yes. If sir. you do these things, mm -hmm. you will never stumble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, 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 I'm looking at this here. If if I apply myself, drawn, I apply myself to the thing that he made mention of mm -hmm. in verse eight, nine, you'll never stumble. Mm -hmm. So it's my responsibility, if, if I'm understanding this here, it's yes. my responsibility to apply myself to do those things. Is that what I'm getting out of that? You're exactly right. He's, besides this, add to your faith. This is your responsibility, mm -hmm. virtue, and to your virtue knowledge. Yes, that's all that's personal, my brother. My that's brother, my true. brother, you helped me. You, <laughs> you really did. You, you, you just helped me. You Bless know, you, sir. Uh, uh, the Bible is right. The Bible is right, my the brother. Bible is right. And if we apply the Bible to our everyday way of living, yeah, a lot of us will live a totally different life. Amen. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Yes, you know? my God. You help me, David. Thank you, man. Thank you. God bless you for your work that you are doing in Alabama. Thank you, sir. You know, Thank you. stay strong, stay focused. Yes, sir. And uh, we gonna meet physically. All right. We will meet. The Lord will meet. Uh, will hook us up. Vincent, he come to Los Angeles. We got to get. We got to get. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The pulpit yeah. pul pul is open right now. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, Doc. Come yes, on, Doc. Come 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 on, Doc. Uh, minister of staff at the Figueroa Street Church. And uh, we're going to ask Damon, if you will, give us a closing prayer. And uh, we're going to ask all of you to tune in to the Spiritual Encouragement Hour that comes on after this. Uh, the numbers are in the chat room. And uh, we're going to ask you, Damon, to pray for Brother Tillman and the work that he's doing. And Amen. pray for all of us. Just pray for the church that we can stay the course, stay focused, and keep our eyes set on Christ. Okay? Amen. Yes, sir. Right. So go Gracious ahead, Dan, if you will. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you once again this evening that we've been blessed to uh, sit under the teaching of your man servant, Brother David Tillman. Uh, just thank you, Father, for using him so mightily uh, this evening, for opening up your word. Mm -hmm. Just teaching us, Father, uh, about uh, not forgetting uh, that we've been purged and just bringing it straight from your word, Father, and just teaching us that uh, simple uh, but such a, a bold lesson that he gave us this evening, Father. Uh, help us to take these words to heart, Father. Help us to stay faithful to you. Uh, just continue to strengthen our faith, Father. Just yes, help Lord. us always to keep you at the center of our lives. 
Uh, please continue to bless uh, Brother Tillman and his congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, watch over them, guide them in the work that they're doing down there, Father. Mm -hmm. uh, bless Brother Tillman and his family. Uh, continue to keep them uh, in your care, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. And we just pray for all the churches of Christ, Father, around the brotherhood, uh, that you will guide us uh, with um, help us to have better understanding and wisdom, Father, as mm -hmm. we teach others and as we continue to preach your word. Mm -hmm. uh, help us where we're weak, Father. Help us where we fall short. Help us always, Father, to keep you at the center of all that we do. Yes, and realize Lord. that uh, Christ is the is the uh, founder of the church, Father. Mm -hmm. and that we should uh, preach the things that he's given us to say, Father. Yes, Lord. Uh, please forgive us all for the things that we've done against you and thought, mm -hmm. word, and deed. And we pray that we can be a blessing to whoever we meet on a daily basis. Yes, Guide Lord. us now and keep us in your care. Mm -hmm. We ask you all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God bless all of you for coming on with us. And I do thank you, or we do thank you for being so consistent every Sunday evening and tuning in to the Soul Session and also to the Spiritual Encouragement Hour. We appreciate all of our preachers, those who come on and help us out in this area. Brother Tillman, God bless you. We thank love you, man. Brother. We love your spirit. We love, love the you work too, that brother. you are doing. And keep thank it you. So, y'all. Tillman. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say roll tide. I'm gonna say roll till. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, brother Tillman. <laughs> oh, thank you, my sister. Thank you. I appreciate thank you, brother Tillman. Okay, thank God bless. You. Thank you, brother. brother. Y'all so, take care, yeah, man. So. God love you. Tell your family we said hello. Your church yes, family. Sir. We'll do, God. Good. We'll do. Right, love boy. you guys as well. Y'all have a blessed night. Yes, Likewise. sir. Tillman, I get in touch with you again. Okay, sir. All right. Talk to you later. Good night, all. Good night.